Hey guys, it's Rala here with another video on The Division. I've been playing this game for about 10 hours now, almost there anyways, and I decided that I wanted to give my, uh, not really a review, but more just my take on The Division itself and what I think of the game. Obviously, I haven't played it long enough to give a full breakdown of the game or what to expect, like I haven't even gotten to the Dark Zone like that yet. But just somebody that, if you know, you're looking to see if the game would interest you, this would be, you know, an early kind of review on what you can expect and what I think of the game. Now, if you don't know what type of game it is, it's a third-person shooter, um, similar to Watch Dogs. I never actually played Watch Dogs, but I've seen some videos, so I can at least make that all there. But I have to say that after 10 hours... Of playing I'm enjoying this game quite immensely I didn't intend on getting the game actually I had just bought the graphics card for my uh, PC and the division came with it so it was just free and I mean I figured why not start playing it since it was free I mean you can't be free or technically I paid for the graphics card so the game was free but you know you get what I'm saying but as I've said, I actually enjoy the game. Um, I, From what I've been get, getting so far, it's not a game that you want to play alone. It's Missions will get very repetitive over time. It's a lot of, you know, it's pretty much all shooting, shoot and kill, point and shoot, all that stuff. And they've got a few things here and there where, you know, it just give you a different, uh, what word am I looking for? Uh, context, like, you know, rescuing refugees, uh, powering on systems, that sort of thing. But if you have friends that you can play it with, or friends that will get it and will play with you, I think you would, you will get much more enjoyment out of it. I just got two friends that are going to get it here pretty soon. I'm pretty stoked on that, because then I'll always have a party to play with and that sort of thing. The matchmaking is actually quite phenomenal, in my opinion. Almost everything that you do has matchmaking, and a lot of people will try to compare Destiny with this game, but I do. it's kind of a you can and you can't. It's a different game, but it's different from Destiny in the sense that, you know, Destiny's first-person shooter, but the Division is third-person, but it's kind of the same in the sense that it's an MMO. You've got the, you know, when you get in safe zones, you see other people that are there um you have matchmaking that sort of thing but what the difference between destiny and the division that i really like is that almost every mission that you do automatically has matchmaking built in so as you can see here you know if i hold down g it'll start up matchmaking right away and i can also fast travel there just to you know get there so i can start the mission but like i said every mission that you have done and has been done has matchmaking and you don't have to just select the mission to go into matchmaking you can start your matchmaking at any time and start playing with people as soon as you want to and that is an awesome feature and it matches you up very well um it puts you about about the same level i when i'm level 10 i think i'm level 11 right? but when i was 10 i was getting matched up level 7 level 8 as well but i, I think you know the level difference is acceptable you know it's not matching you with somebody super powerful or out of your league I guess you could say and it just so far it seems like a good matchmaking system I've been playing mostly alone here and there but whenever I do missions that I want to do on hard I will definitely find people to play with them when you play it on hard it makes the missions obviously more difficult but there's also more enemies they have better protection they're stronger obviously but the loot's better, obviously. you know. That's just standard difficulty, uh, rewards, and all that stuff. Now, when it comes to your character itself, when I first was talking about the skills, I wasn't quite sure how they would um, play into, you know, how unlocking works. But I've got to say, I actually enjoy the unlocking system for this game. You start out with these three open right away. You know, it's just your three starting skills, or at least... Um, I actually can't remember. I think it actually it might be these three you can choose. Or no, I think it's these two. I 
believe these two is the only ones you can start with. And then once you get your base of operation, you have three wings in there that you can upgrade. If you um, would like to see it a little bit more, talk about that, there's another video. But just a brief over it, you've got the medical wing, the tech wing, and the security wing. And once those are unlocked, you can select certain upgrades for your base of operation. When you select these, you get certain um, bonuses based on what you s purchased for that wing. And these also affect your game world in various ways. As an example, if you bought a K9 unit, now you have K9s and stuff in your base, and it says that they're out helping you. I don't know if they actually are um, helping you in those missions, but that's what it says. And when you also buy those things, you also get access to new skills and your modifications for those skills. So as an example, on my medical first aid, I have all of the modifications available except for the master. And in order to have master, you have to build all the metal upgrades. So as you're upgrading your base of operations, you're getting these new skills and it just ties in really well. Um, it makes you feel like you're upgrading yourself, you know, like you're, it gives you, it, you're upgrading your base and it's also making you better. You're not just experience and that sort of thing. And I guess I should have mentioned as well, the talents are also played a part in that. As you upgrade it, you'll get one or two different talents depending on what you purchase. And this also goes with perks as well. When you purchase something, you'll get one, two, even three, I believe I've seen. And like I've said in the previous ones, the perks last are always there. You don't have to activate them like you do with skills and talents. Um, let me think of what else I can say. The what I I do enjoy the way that the encounter system works. Uh, when you go to your base of operations or your hideouts or safe zones, you go and talk to so this officer and he gives you a bunch of side missions and then you also have a board that you go up to let me see if i can find it really quick uh right here and it gives you all the encounters that are nearby i don't know if this is updated periodically so you know if i complete all the encounters here if the new ones will show up but it's you know it's kind of nice i mean the encounters aren't very really good in terms of experience or rewards you know like this is you know, 60 supplies, 37 credits, 690 there, while these missions are definitely better in terms of, uh, you know, the credits and what you get, especially the experience. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's the sm these encounters usually take you a minute to two minutes tops, it's nothing serious, and the missions will take you anywhere from 20 minutes to, if the difficulty is up, real up there, I think it could take you over an hour. Um, I believe one mission I did on normal took me 40 minutes, but that was the first time I had done it. So, um, as you know, as obviously as you play a mission, you'll get a grasp of what you're supposed to do and the best things that you can do, such as spots that you should take cover and all that stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, I haven't gotten to the um, dark zone yet. It's, uh, I don't think it's in my level yet. Well, there's a mission in the dark zone over here, but like I said, I haven't gotten into that yet, so I can't update anything. Once I have, have gotten into the dark zone, I'll actually make another video on that. But, and then uh, also when you get these missions... The billboards! Whoops. They keep going um, out. I don't want that to talk. But the and missions, the, the first time you do them... They give you a very large boost to whatever field sense, like this one would be tech. Um, if it's green, it'll be medical. And if it is blue, then it would be uh, uh, security, excuse me. So, you know, the first time you do it, you'll get a bonus, 500, whatever it is. But then after you do that, it just gives you straight experience and items. So you can't farm the missions for mass uh, boosts, which I think is a good thing. Um, it, you would just upgrade your base super quickly if you could do that. These encounters with these small boosts give you a reason to do them. Because if you could just farm those missions, you would probably never touch them. Um, 
and these encounters and stuff that when you're playing with friends, it makes them a lot more fun. If you do them by yourself, it's going to get repetitive. That's the biggest thing with this game. And also like this, if you don't like repetition, if you don't like um, grinding, then you won't like this game. It's it's a grind fest. It's, you know, spamming missions, all that stuff to get the best loot that you can. It is one of those games. You can't avoid that. But I have got to say that I've enjoyed it so far. I'm not very big on Destiny. I tried to play it for a while and I couldn't get into it, but I have enjoyed this so far. Um, maybe it's just I like third-person mechanics and stuff like that. But it does a good job of keeping my attention so far. Anyways. Uh, I even went ahead and bought the Season Pass, which, you know, maybe you're one of those people that doesn't think Season Passes are a good thing and all that stuff. And I will admit that some Season Passes I definitely don't agree with. But I've liked what's happened so far, and I'm taking a chance that the content will get better and better, especially with more player feedback uh, surfacing. Um, just in general, things for the game, uh, the voice acting is pretty good. I like the people so far. I mean, there's not any super memor memorable people. Excuse me, I'm pretty sure I messed up that word. But it's, you know, it's, it's a... It's, the story is a story. It's just there. Um, most people that get this game probably aren't playing it for the story. They're playing it for the action. Although I have got to admit that the fact that Garrus is your uh, on, your on-person computer, whatever you want to call it, love it. Garrus is one of my favorite characters in Mass Effect. And I don't know who the actual voice actor is, but he will always be Garrus to me. And it's just badass. When I first heard him, uh, when I was put started up the game it it was like it was just bliss it was nice to hear that voice it's something about his voice is just awesome uh, i can't explain it but it's a great thing to hear um kind of like when you hear peter dinklage in destiny i wish they hadn't changed his voice i, I don't know why they did but uh you know it was nice to hear him he just just the way they tend they sound it's always nice to hear that um, you know, honestly, like I said, I haven't been playing long enough to give a full in-depth review, hey, but I, that I've, so far, if you like to, if you have friends that will play it, you're not, you know, you don't care about grind fests and all that stuff, and you just, you want to have some fun, I would pick it up. Mm, if you're going to buy it, maybe wait for a sale, if, maybe. I got it for free, so I can't, you know, obviously I, it doesn't Best matter to me city. that much. But, um, as far as renting, that's up to you. But, right now, I like it. It's fun. I like the way the item management is as well. Uh, you get quite a few different kinds of weapons. You've got the assault rifle, you have submachine guns, you have light machine guns, uh, marksmen's, you know, like rifles. Hey. Pistols, shotguns, that sort of thing. The gear is actually something, you know, I pay attention to it pretty, you know, or pretty well. Like, I like to look at what I'm doing and finding out what's best. I haven't a certain uh, skill type that I focus on. I kind of try to balance it to where everything's average, you know. I'm not... I haven't picked on going super high on the health or the skill power of the DPS. Um, maybe in the future, once I figure out something that works, I might focus on damage. Because as long as you're not getting hit, you don't got to worry about health. I don't want to be some tank that's in the front lines. That doesn't sound like a great idea. Lots of DPS and skill power, to, to me, sounds like the best. But I haven't focused on that yet. Um, Bad this side of the dark zone. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to add right now. So, if you are thinking about getting it, I i mean, I'm having fun with it, so that choice is really yours. If you're looking for anybody to play with, be sure to leave a comment or, you know, just let me know that you're playing and interested to, you know, we can team up and do the Dark Zone or whatever. Hopefully you don't betray me or, you know, hopefully I don't betray you. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like the video, leave a like, uh, subscribe. I got many more to come. So thanks, guys, and happy gaming.